So you go to apps on ChatGPT, you click create app, select mobile app, tell the AI what kind of phone app you want built, then ChatGPT writes all the code for your app. But the best part is not that you can see and test your app right inside ChatGPT. You're actually able to instantly use your app right on your phone. Wait, what? I don't have that inside my ChatGPT. Well, you see, for the past year, I built a Chrome extension called Ultra that unlocks hidden abilities inside ChatGPT to help automate my work. But this ChatGPT phone app builder is honestly one of the coolest things we built so far. I actually use it regularly to create little mobile apps to automate different parts of my life. So let's jump into ChatGPT and see it in action. So I'm gonna click on apps here in the sidebar, press create app, and then we're just gonna select mobile app. And what we're gonna build is a tennis serve analytics app. So I've been absolutely obsessed with tennis lately and I'm trying to improve my serve. And there's no app in the app store that allows me to track my practice sessions. So when I have a basket of balls and I'm serving, I want to be able to track how many first serves I get in. And then when I miss my first serve, how many second serves I get in. And then if I double fault, which means I get both the first and second serve out, then I can track that as well. I have a double fault button. And then each session, I'm able to track all these, all these, uh, numbers by having my phone on a tripod and I can just press a button after every serve and I'll see my progression, how I'm improving. And this is going to motivate me to do better and put pressure on me to perform, which is very similar to how it is in a match. So it's a really great tool and it, there's no app like that in the app store. And that's kind of the beauty of chat GPT. You can build custom apps that uh, serve exactly your needs that aren't available. So we're going to press save. And then for app building method, I'm going to choose simple one step build out. This is uh, AI alt uh, auto multi-step and custom multi-step. These are for more advanced apps. So with these two, you're going to have chat GPT use uh, multiple prompts to brainstorm ideas. If you're trying to build a very complex app and then for select library, again, this is a very simple app. I'm just going to do HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, these other two, uh, Flow, Byte, and Bootstrap, these are just uh, ways to make the app more beautiful with using existing styles. These are just frameworks. So if you're building something simple, I'd recommend simple ones that build out and then choosing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then local storage, I'd turn that on if your app needs to have some kind of storage ability. And in this case, we want to save all the sessions and have the analytics so I can see my progress. And then write code with, I always select O3 uh, mini high. It's my favorite model for writing code. And then here I'm going to write the prompt, which is a description of uh, what the app should do, which it should look like. So I'm going to just paste that in, build a tennis serve analytics app for when I'm practicing my serve. It should have five buttons, first serve in, second serve in, double fault, new session, analytics here. I made a mistake here, analytics. It should also have a current session section where it's showing you the stats for the current session. So first serve in, second serve in, double faults, total serves hit. And then you press first serve when you make your first serve, you press second serve when you miss the first serve, but make the second serve when you double fault, you press the double fall button. And then here I'm telling it how I want the analytics to work, how there is a separate row for each session and then you can delete each session as well from the analytics. So let's press build app now and have chat GPT build this phone app for me. So here you're going to see it starting to reason with the O3 high model. It's actually using your chat GPT account in the background to start talking to itself and coming up with a plan to make this app. And as soon as it starts writing the code, you'll be able to see it here. It will use these tabs. And then as soon as it's done, you'll see a preview of your app here and you'll even be able to test it out and play around with it. So here it's starting to write the code. This is the HTML code and you can see it in that tab as soon as it's writing all the code. Then it switches to CSS and it's writing all the CSS. These are all the styles and the design of the app. And now it's writing the JavaScript, which is kind of the logic behind how everything works in the app. And as soon as it's done this, we'll be able to see a preview of the app. 
and be able to use it right on our computer. Okay, and there the app is done. Uh, it's not the most beautiful app, but it's very simple and I think it can get the job done. So let me pull up my phone and record my screen so we can see how it works on the phone. Here, I'm going to uh, press Ultra and I don't have any apps imported yet. I press the import button and right away I'm gonna see Tennis Serve Analytics. I just press on that and as soon as I have that here, I can start using it. And as you can see, it's exactly the same app we have on the computer. So when I'm doing a new session, you know, I'm getting my first serve in, you see it's updating. Let's say I, you know, get, now it's a second serve in. Then I have a double fault. Then I can press new session and everything goes to zero. But when I press analytics, you'll see that it shows all my statistics here. And then I can go back, do another session, press new session, analytics, and now I have the other session as well. So it shows me all my statistics and I can see how I'm improving. So for the next example, I'd like to build a time converter app. So I work with people from around the world and sometimes they we talk on the phone and we're trying to figure out uh, when we can jump on our next call. It's to be so much easier to have an, just an app I can quickly see uh, what time it is in uh, my time zone compared to their time zone. So I'm going to create an app and we're going to call this uh, time zone converter. You can put a clock icon. This is a mobile app. Press save. Again, simple one step build out HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript. This one actually doesn't need local storage, so I turn that off. Again, we'll use uh, mini high. And let me show you the prompt that I created. So build a time converter for, for five time zones that I use on a regular basis. The five time zones needed should be shown as cities. So this is places that I wor uh, work with people from. Toronto, Canada, Los Angeles. Tor Toronto, Canada is actually where I'm from. Los Angeles, London, Hong Kong, and Melbourne, Australia. In the UI, only show the city names. I want the UI to have buttons at the bottom of the screen to go left or right. So as you press the button, the time is aligned on something that looks like a tape for all five cities. So this kind of allows me to scroll back and forth uh, where all the time zones are perfectly aligned. This is kind of a cool UI that's not really available as a phone app and allows me to see all the time zones at the same time from all the cities. Um, and you should be able to see three time zones at a time. So 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. as an example. And then as you're scrolling, it would be, you know, 10 p.m. here. It would be 9 p.m. and 8 p.m. And you could see all the time zones aligned kind of like tape uh, on top of each other and below. Uh, this would be super useful uh, so you could quickly figure out when you could uh, connect on calls. So let's build this app and see how it works. So O3 Mini starts uh, its reasoning over here and it starts planning the app. So now it's writing the HTML for the app. This is the CSS, which are the styles of the app, writing all the code for that. And this is the JavaScript, which is the logic behind making the app work. And the app is done. So uh, it's showing 11 a.m. Uh, for Toronto. Let's see how it works. See, it's showing 11.31 because it's uh, it's 10.31 in Toronto. So this app doesn't actually work exactly the way that I want. I just want it in one hour increments. So I want ChatGPT to fix it. As I'm testing it here, I'm not happy that it's showing. Uh, so technically it is working. You see like 9 a.m. will be uh, 6 a.m. or 2 p.m. in London, 9 p.m. in 12 a.m. in uh, Melbourne. So it is kind of useful, but I don't like the fact that it's using the current time. So I'm telling it not to have any relation to the current time because I don't need that. So this is kind of the beauty of what we can do here. When it doesn't do exactly what you want, you can ask it to fix the problem. So we're going to send that off. and Let's have ChatGPT fix our app for us. So here it's writing all the code that needs to be fixed. It's only writing JavaScript. It seems that only JavaScript code is required to fix the issue. So here everything's resolved. 
and let's see yeah it's working perfectly so let's say i know i can make a, my call at three so i uh, move this to 3 p.m my time and i could see that it's 12 p.m in los angeles 8 p.m in london 4 a.m in hong kong but let's say uh, my friend calls me from london he says he can do the call at 6 p.m so i go backwards and i see here 6 p.m and i can see that it's 1 p.m my time so this kind of UI is very useful for me. It just allows me to kind of convert back and forth kind of with like uh, a moving slider that I can see all the different time zones. But uh, let's see how this actually works on the phone. So I'm going to record my screen on my phone and uh, we can take a look. So I press on ultra here and I'm going to press import. Got time zone converter. I press on that. We load the app and as you can see it works exactly the same as on the computer you can always exit the app go back to it yeah it's working perfectly does exactly what i need now you're probably wondering how do i upgrade my chat gpt with ultra and what is the cost so upgrading your chat gpt is just a one click chrome extension install you will see ChatGPT instantly transform and get all this new functionality, like the ability to build multi-step prompt flows to generate entire massive projects with just one click. A prompt library sidebar where you can manually save your best prompts or have ChatGPT use AI to generate custom prompts to automate your life. An ability to build your own custom ChatGPT interface with forms. It also allows ChatGPT to break out of the chat window and write your emails, talk to YouTube videos, be your assistant across the web, work inside your documents, and even do your spreadsheets. So how much is this upgrade gonna cost? I mean, here's software that just unlocks ChatGPT and spreadsheets. If you click on pricing, you can see they charge $19 a month. This is literally just one of dozens and dozens of features we have with Ultra. So you're probably thinking we charge $50 a month or even $100 a month. The reality is actually the opposite. My goal with this software is to make using AI for work accessible to as many people as possible. This is why for people watching this video today, we set up a special discount link. You can get Ultra for $47 a year instead of the much higher regular price by going to getultra.ai slash go or by clicking the link in the description. I'm looking forward to getting your feedback on the software and hearing about all the amazing things you guys are doing with it.